Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you Spring Security using JSON Web Token. Uh, this application is going to be a stateless application. Uh, okay, so let's get started. I'm going to be creating this application from scratch so many of the steps are going to be familiar if you are following my other tutorials. First let's set up the build. Next, let's add the dependencies we need. So, we're going to go step by step, so just wave and basic for now. And yeah, that's it. Next, let's add. I'm going to copy paste some code I have written previously. I haven't created this, not this, and for now let's just send success. Now for data binding I'm going to need some other let's add those on a separate list. Okay, now let's add the configurations. I'm not going to be doing much since doesn't have any view that's it now I'm going to add to test config which are pretty common you have seen my other videos the web uh, in it and the root config nothing fancy over here let's run it and test it out Now let's open up the postman to test it out. Okay, some post is fine. It's going to be a get. Okay. So the application works. Now let's add the database. First let's add the dependencies. So let's make another block.
so I'm using Hibernate. Uh, I've added this first time I want to add in the database and I also need Spring Warden. Let's add that. So all the database config, sorry, dependencies are added. Now let's add the database config. Database config are similar as well, so I'm gonna copy paste that as well. See my other video for explanation. I'm going to give a, a brief explanation over here as well, so don't worry too much. So here uh, I don't have the app user class. I'm going to create that. Uh, other than that, in the application context. Hmm, this is my data source transaction manager and the session factory that we are going to use for getting our data and some properties so um, create a um, database called demo rest if you haven't created or any other database just put the name over here after creating so yeah let's add the app user So this is my app user, simple ID, username, password and authorities, nothing fancy, and the getters and setters and entity tag. Next let's add the services. So services are also pretty simple, so load user by name, post, get, patch, delete, which we are not going to reuse all of this. And here are implementation. Session factory, we're using the user Simon stuff. Nothing fancy over here. Now let's test this out in the home controller. So I'm going to bring the old code back. Yeah. Now let's add the database over here. Get Okay, I forgot the database name, so let's add, grid that, and then add it, and database added, since the connection is okay, uh, so I have created the database already but if i didn't have that so let's for now let's delete uh, this and redeploy so yeah we get the table clean nothing in it let's add one row to the table so I'm adding the authority, this three, uh, the password is one, two, three, four, five, six, and the username. Let's run this. Check out this. Okay, all done. Now let's redeploy. So we should be getting this since I'm getting this user using the service. So let's open the postman and what is it? A get request. Okay. Uh, get request. Anything else? No, nothing else. So yeah. So yeah, I get the information from the database. So database configuration is done. Now let's add the security. For adding security, let's first add dependencies. Uh, here are my security dependencies, nothing much web config and JJWT. Now let's create the package where all the security stuff are going to go. Uh, this is not the very right way to do this, but for this demo, I'm keeping it all together. Ok, 
Okay, so first let's add the security config. So here's my security config. So lots of error are showing. I'm going to be adding all those later. So let's let's just start seeing what we have done so far over here. So I'm using the user service uh, for getting the user from the database. It's a Spring user service as you can see and the authentication entry point for managing the entry point and so this part is uh, familiar uh, here I'm configuring the uh, token management system how the token should be uh, managed and then the security configuration and uh, disabling the CSRF since we need that uh, adding that entry point and making the server stateless over here and saying any request the star star is okay anyone can access it uh, permit all other than that uh, for option uh, it's permit all but other than that auth everything is protected now now first let's add the controller So here are two controller, one for authentication uh, and one for showing the uh, database stuff or anything uh, secure the stuff. So this is the protected uh, controller, nothing fancy, just I'm using the pre-authorized uh, response entity and success true. And the fun fact is in the authentication controller. So here I'm using the uh, token utils which I haven't created yet so basically what I'm doing over here is uh, using uh, when uh, someone calls the auth this method will be invoked and here uh, using the authentication request class uh, which I'll create in a minute uh, I'll get the username and password verify that using the user service and then uh, in the security context I'm going to set that information I'm using the uh, token over here generating token for the user details and finally returning this to the user next I add the filter that's going to handle uh, this security system uh, so anyone uh, makes a request everything goes through this filter so uh, in the request it checks whether uh, in the token it has uh, in the token in the header so the header is going to be uh, the token header over here or uh, if it finds that token and it verifies with the stored uh, stored token in the server and if it finds that both are okay then it lets uh, the user go through otherwise shows a uh, security exception we'll see that in a minute so that's basically uh, everything over here that's checking get context uh, if authentication is okay very checking the validation next I'm going to add three uh, utility model these are not mandatory but this keeps things simple so first the authentication request so this way uh, when user sends data in a JSON with username and password it should be converted this is, uh, what we have seen in the controller authentication controller now this thing is gone so I guess this is it for this video in the next video I'm going to finish this so it should not take long so yeah thanks you guys for watching and don't forget to watch the next one for yeah, finalization. Bye-bye.